I have a very long title, don't be afraid. I will mostly speak about, actually, about, about Kalaparisian dynamics. Namely, the point is Kalaparisian is an equation for a rough interface, and all we need is it has certain scaling laws. And these are well understood in one plus one, so in two dimensions. So when the interface is one dimensional, and when there's no frozen disorder, things become already a little bit more delicate when you have higher dimensions. But that's not our problem. Our problem is what happens when there is frozen disorder? There is a sort of folklore that nothing happens. Indeed, the first experimental attempts to verify KPZ scaling were done with systems with, with experimental systems which had frozen disorder. Now, <clears throat> so let me come to the outline of the talk. So first I will talk about frozen disorder. I will talk about rough interfaces and percolation. And then I will <clears throat> more specifically go to generalized percolation. And I will discuss two dimensions very briefly. The main emphasis will be on three dimensions and higher. And the main point is that in typical percolation models, you have multiple giant clusters if you are supercritical and if you are in high enough dimensions. And these multiple giant clusters lead then to morphological phase transitions and what I call sponge phases. I will discuss this for site in bond percolation and for this generalized percolation, which is by some people called <coughs> general epidemic process. And then I will at the end talk about the consequences for KPZ. So the point is frozen disorder can lead to pinned interfaces. It doesn't always, because if you have an interface which is pushed by a sufficiently strong force, it will not get pinned. But the point is then there is a critical force and so there are critically pinned interfaces. Now, it's well known that there can be two situations. One is that this interface is fractal. And then essentially you add the situation what is considered as percolation. But then there are also non-fractal but rough surfaces. They're usually assumed to be self-affined, although I don't know any mathematical proof for that. But that there are transitions between the two was observed long ago and in various settings. So for instance, uh, <coughs> fluid ambition. So if you have small surface tension of the fluid, then you get a fractal. If you have high surface tension, you get rough, but non-fractal surfaces. A random field icing model at t equals zero. If the disorder is low, is large, you get a fractal. If it's small, you get, <coughs> but not zero, you get a rough interface. But these papers have not really led to deep understanding and deep understanding came essentially, as far as I understand, from a paper by Janssenit collaborators who defined or who coined this notion, general epidemic process. And they did a full field theoretic organization group analysis, quite a serious task uh, for the following model, namely, in percolation, you have one probability, namely to get wetted or infected or break or whatever you call it. Now we have PKs with K and integer, which is the probability that the not yet wetted site gets infected during the case attack. So the situation is you have a site which has several links to it and it can get attacked from each link independently. And then if it gets wetted during the case attack, then you call this PK the probability and QK, they can also define its equivalent, the probability of the site is infected after K attacks. Now, just to give you an example of what this means, bond percolation is the case where every attack has the same chance to succeed. So all these PKs are the same. Site percolation is P1 is different from zero, but all the others are zero. In this case here, 
the pK decrease with K. But if the pK increase sufficiently fast with K, then you can get a transition from fractal to non-fractal. And the transition, according to these people, is just a tricritical point. Now, back 10 years ago or so, we did rather extensive simulations of this. And to our frustration, the tricritical exponents for d equal three were very different from what Janssen had, uh, had predicted. Well, they agreed in d equal four and in d equal five, it was more or less trivial that they agreed because that's the upper critical dimension already. Now, <clears throat> I, let me just mention two special cases for general epidemic processes. The random field Ising model at t equals zero, where you neglect spontaneous nucleation, so a spin flips only when it's pushed by the neighbors. Uh, there you can define pk just by in this way. Dossel and Diamond showed this in a very clear paper. So that's the case. And but I will <coughs> mostly use another model, namely where p1 and p2 are different, but all the other pks are equal to p2. So in this minimal model, I just have to remember whether a site was attacked before or not. I don't have to remember how often it was. So let me see what <coughs> uh, we get in two dimensions. I said it will be very short, brief. And indeed, a situation is much simpler than what was conceived by most people, namely critically pinned. At, so at a critical point, the interfaces are always in the population universality class although there are lots of papers who claim differently. And the supercritical <coughs> interfaces are always in the KPZ class. The point is the problem which we will talk just next, <coughs> namely that there are multiple giant clusters can't happen in two dimensions because of topology. So let me now discuss morphological phase transitions due to multiple clusters. For side percolation, things are easy. If D is larger than three or equal three, we know that PC, the critical probability is less than one half. So if you color half of the points of a square lattice, or of a, uh, not square, of a cubic lattice, black and the other half randomly white, so both the black and the white points will percolate, and you have already two percolating clusters. And since they will percolate far above the critical threshold, if you have P equal one half, then there won't be, there won't be more than two, so there will be exactly two. The question we ask ourselves, is this also true for bone percolation for general epidemic process? That the things are not completely trivial is illustrated by the fact that mathematicians, these are pure mathematicians, have taken up this problem and what they could prove, and this paper is by now published two years ago, that there are multiple super bond percolation clusters, but they could do the proof only for D larger than eight. And that is of course not what we are interested in physicists. Uh, Professor so, Grasberger, <coughs> you have got one. These are now simulations for three dimensions and shown is here a slice through a super, supercritical bond percolation cluster. So the red sides are the cluster grown for a finite time from a planar seed at the bottom. So the, the, the cluster is grown from bottom up, but it stops, that's the finite time, before it reaches the top. And then we ask which sides are connected to the top. And these are the black sides. They don't look connected because this is only a slice. But actually there are and the only minutes. sites which are not connected to the bottom or to the top are the white ones. And you can prove, mathematicians have indeed proven, that in the scaling limit, both the red and the black sides are dense in the cluster. And I call this a sponge phase because this means that if I would have water flowing left to right, then all these points, the, the red and the black are connected. So if the red is the sponge and the black is a uh, void, 
then the water can freely run through. It's like a sponge. So, Herr Grasberger, Sie haben noch eine Minute. General epidemic process. Here I have now for five dimensions a <coughs> phase <coughs> diagram. So P1 and P2, I said I have two independent <coughs> percolation probabilities, first attack, second attack, and later ones. Side percolation has the second one will never succeed. Bond percolation, tricolility point. This curve, the pink curve or the, the magenta curve is just a critical curve. The green curve is the curve above which the clusters are completely compact. They have little holes, but they're not spongy. But in this vast region between the two curves, you have the sponge phase. What happens in four dimensions? The four dimension is qualitatively the same. Yeah, the, the, the green curve moved a little bit down. So there's a rather narrow gap here, but no qualitative difference. The difference comes when we go to three dimensions, because now you see that the green curve, so the transition between sponge and non, sorry, non-sponge <coughs> uh, clusters ends up exactly as far as the simulations go at the tricolor point. So if we move through the critical line where the clusters are, the critical clusters are fractal, are percolation like, we end up in a sponge. If we move up through a rough but non-fractal surface, then we end up in a compact. In the spongy case, there is obviously no KPZ scaling in the strict sense because the surface, the interface is really dense everywhere. It has dimension, a full dimension of the full space. But maybe KPZ can hold for an effective surface where we cut off the fjords. So we somehow connect the top layer and then we can ask, do we find uh, uh, KPZ? And we can also ask, do we find KPZ when there's non sponge case? This is now in three dimensions. P1 is a rather small but non zero number. The line here at the bottom, the red short line, is the prediction from Carla Parisian, KPZ. It's a log log plot, it's a scaling law, alpha is zero in three dimensions. Point, whatever it is. For small systems, the curves are, well, indeed steeper, but for large in the scaling limit, they're definitely flatter and they're all curved down. So there is little evidence that they will ever become as steep as this red line. Now, this sort of analysis was done for <laughs> about 30, 40 points or so. And these points fall into two classes, it turns out. The crosses are where we observe something which is compatible with KPZ. I'm very careful. The system sizes are as big as I could go up to 8,000 by 8,000 by 10 to the five. Uh, these are the biggest ones, but, and the, the magenta ones are, which I call weak KPZ, namely, where obviously the beta is either zero or a very small number, much smaller than KPZ. What is surprising is that this yellow line, which is the transition between KPZ and what I call weak KPZ, seems to join in at the tricity point. I should say, that this is the weakest point of the whole analysis because these simulations are really not easy. So I cannot for sure say that all <coughs> lines end up here, but yet it's very strongly suggested that at this point, not two phases come together as was assumed in the theory of Jans et al, but four phases, finite clusters, sorry, uh, sponge, KBZ, and weak KBZ. And if we define the effective surface properly, 
we find that whether it's sponge or not really doesn't matter. It's KBZ. So we come to the conclusions now. <clears throat> the existence of multiple coexisting supercritical clusters, which densely penetrate each other, leads to spongy phases where uh, <clears throat> points from one cluster are arbitrarily close to points <clears throat> from another cluster. The transition sponsored to compact is a true phase transition, at least for three to six dimensions. I have not discussed any evidence for that, but you can look at the transition more precisely. That's rather easy. What is much less easy is that even in the compact non spatial phase, interfaces in three dimensions are not always in the KBZ universality class. And in three dimensions, four phases meet at the correct critical point, which might explain why we have disagreement with the field theory in three dimensions for the triclinic point, but agreement in four dimensions. And finally, I didn't say much about it, but in two dimensions, we don't have any of these problems. And with this, I want to finish and I want to give a congratulation to Deepak and Ustansia. Thank you, Professor Grasbeko, for the uh, very interesting talk. Are there any questions? I can't hear. Thank yeah. you, for, yeah, thank you for your talk. If there are any questions from the uh, audience participants, please ask. Uh, uh, can I go ahead? And yeah, ask? Sure, sure. So, Professor Grasberger, thank you for the talk. Can you? Uh, so, I just have one small question. Did you, Did you find the critical? It's very. I can't. I hardly can hear anything. Okay. Can you find the critical exponents? Uh, did you find the critical exponents near the tricritical point? Sorry. Sie die kritischen Exponente äh, Exponenten nahe des uh, uh, tricritical points gefunden. Is try uh, the critical well, exponents. Well, I find critical exponents. In what case? For what case? Near the tri tri critical point. Near the tri critical. Oh, oh. Yeah. Well, at the tri critical point, you have special exponents, which are well. In this model, they were calculated by uh, Janssen et al. But uh, we found numerically rather big differences in three dimensions. In four dimensions, it was much closer. We didn't publish it yet. It was 10 years ago, but for whatever reasons, OK. And in five dimensions, it was also close. But five dimensions is the upper critic dimension for that model. So Thank you. the critical exponents at the tricritical point are Measurable, they're not too easy, not too easy, not too difficult either. But well, they are what they are. I, I can. They are quoted in the paper which I mentioned on the first page. Thank you. Okay. I guess there what are. No, yeah, I guess there are no further questions. Vielen Dank, Herr Grasberger, für Ihre Präsentation. I had a question. Do you expect logarithmic corrections at the tricritical point? Sorry? Uh, Deepak had gefragt, ob sie logarithmische ex, huh? corrections. Uh, logarithmische Korrektionen am tricritical point finden. Herr Grasberger? Ja. Finden Sie logarithmische Korrektionen nahe des drei kritischen Punktes? Oh, in five dimensions, there are logarithmic corrections. Oh. This is percolation. So percolation, the upper critical dimension would be six. Tritical point shifts it down by one unit, so five. And in five dimensions, it's compatible with logarithmic corrections. OK, thank you. But not in three. OK, thank you. Yes, uh, that's all about it. Thank you so once again for the talk. Uh...